Good morning. Thanks for coming back today. My booth is set up in the backyard in Pacific City, Oregon, and I'm doing this in conjunction with the Salem Art Fair event, which is virtual and online today at SalemArt.org. By having the booth in the backyard, it gives me an opportunity to talk about the stories behind my work. This segment I'm entitled, <laughs> Not Just a Weaver. All of this work begins with an idea. You should know there are many skills that go into making a handwoven garment. I am a maker of cloth. We could do a whole episode just on that topic. I use color, like a painter, and other textile techniques and add it to the handwoven cloth. This helps me tell the story behind each piece. I am a maker of cloth and I am a designer. That means I make the patterns for the cloth. I have also become a free motion quilter. Let's talk about that for a minute. In Pacific City, there is a group called the Tuesday Stitchers. They meet at the community center and work on quilts and other fiber projects. I would drop in from time to time and visit with my fiber friends. It wasn't long before the idea of using some quilting techniques with the handwoven fabric popped into my head. I wanted to try quilting this handwoven fabric. Master quilter Denise Clausen took me under her wing and agreed to help me figure out if we could do this. Why quilting? I love the idea of the stitches telling part of the story in the woven cloth. There were several aspects of this project to problem solve for this to be successful because the nature of my hand woven cloth is quite different than traditional fabrics for quilting. Working together, we figured it out At first, Denise did the stitching on the long arm after I chalked out the design. Eventually, she turned the controls over to me. Free motion quilting means that you're stitching the cloth without a pattern guide. It can be a little intimidating when you're looking at a large piece of yardage. I'm going to show you a piece of yardage here that is the quilted side. However, I drew on my drawing skills from many years ago and reminded myself that quilting looks a whole lot like continuous line drawing. Continuous line drawing is when you put the pencil on the page Put your eyes on the subject and let your eye guide your hand without looking at the page. With that in mind, I had the confidence to begin to use this long arm machine. So as I work on this piece of cloth, I visualize pattern pieces, jacket front, jacket back, and I develop designs for those spaces. And it's all freehand. There are no guides. There are no patterns. There are a few things that quilter needs to keep in mind, such as the space between the lines, filling the areas to help secure the batting, and trying not to cross over lines. I love the way I use my whole body to guide the free motion controls. It takes four hours to do a piece that is the size of a twin size bed. I'm going to take a minute here and flip this over. There you can see the batting material, the woven material, and the subtle stitching design starting to show. Hi guys, thanks for watching.
All right, back to where I was. Um, one of the things that I find fascinating about this quilting, especially on a light-colored handwoven fabric, is that the stitching is subtle. And as the body moves, the facets or the stitching of the pattern is revealed in the light. Much like the facets of a diamond catch the light, the quilting is, re is, is revealed as the body is in motion. I'm going to take a step around the table here and show you some other quilted pieces. I like this coat very much. It's a light colored fabric with a subtle stripe. I call it a fog gray, but look at the inside of the coat. It is just beautiful. I use motifs that suggest waves, bubbles, or kelp gardens. Now I'm going to turn the coat around and you can see how subtle the pattern is. All those hours of stitching and weaving create this beautiful piece that will tell a story wherever it goes. Now I have some other quilting things that I was inspired by my quilting group. Let me move around here. I also started to piece fabrics. It's not particularly easy to quilt um, and piece handwoven fabrics. They're soft, but I have developed techniques to do it and I love creating the stained glass effect of these jewel tone fabrics. And this is my long Kawanda vest. Um, it's a style that I particularly like and it's a signature piece. That means I do it in different colors at different times, but each one is one of a kind. Here is a new short version. You can see that. Very comfortable piece with a drop sleeve and a bound edge. Now I'll give you a little tour of some of the quilted pieces here on the rack. In the back, I have one in Celadon. The quilting is just gorgeous on the collar. This is the kind of collar that protects you from the cold wind. And here's the inside, again with this beautiful story of waves and bubbles, things that suggest being by the ocean. Here is a short jacket, quite a classic style. And again, the inside is stunning. Each piece is unique. And here is the back. And as the light catches it, you can see that story, bubbles and spirals and waves. Here's one with a purple lining. I use a silk batting because it is lightweight, it doesn't have a lot of bulk, but it still lets the stitch re be revealed. Quilters often use polyester batting or wool batting, and there are all good reasons for each batting choice. Part of it is stitch definition. One of the things that's particularly hard with my fabrics is that they are soft and they have a pile. They're not a flat surface. Therefore, the stitches get buried, but I didn't want to add bulk to the jackets. So by using the silk batting, I achieved a buttery soft feel with that batting. And the silk is really quite insulating for winter weather and warm weather. So silk was the choice, sometimes harder to get hold of, but just a beautiful choice. This coat has more of a geometric style pattern to it. I think this coat should go to New York City. It's just that stunning. This is in a midnight teal. Here's one in a midnight navy with a black lining. I use uh, dichroic glass buttons made by fellow artist friends. Here's one in a beautiful blackberry purple. And here's another striking light colored coat that has a 
black lining stitched in a dark charcoal gray. Contemporary looking pieces that will last a lifetime. Now, once in a while, I do some very special one-of-a-kind pieces. And uh, two years ago, I did a series called Women of Steel, where I used a metallic wire and wove it in with the soft chenille to create an armor series, if you will, in response to the hashtag MeToo movement. I felt like there were women who needed a special jacket to give them protection or armor to go out into the world to do the hard things that they have to do. And it was um, quite an adventure to weave with wire. This particular piece was quilted. This particular Woman of Steel piece is not quilted and you can see how the wire is shaping the fabric. And as the wearer wears this jacket often, it will assume her shape. This particular coat I call the poet's coat. It has wire in the collar and in the hem, and it too is part of the series called Women of Steel. You can see these on my website, which is the www.theoregonweaver.com. This beautiful image was taken by Tear Sheet Magazine, a style magazine, Tear Sheet PDX Magazine, a style magazine coming out of Portland, Oregon, who has done just incredible work with their photography. I was very pleased to work with them to have my work featured in this way. Can you imagine wearing a hand-woven coat? Of course you can when you see a picture like this. <laughs> Now, next in the booth, I am showing the hooded shawl with the waterfall scarf. The gray hooded shawl is a separate piece with the scarf overlaid. And it's, it, again, is one of my thinking outside the box kind of scarf, where I'm using my fabric pieces with the edging technique to suggest waterfalls. The tail ends are untrimmed, suggesting overspray or spindrift that you would see from a mighty waterfall or ocean waves. This coat in my booth is called Fog on the River. I might have mentioned this yesterday as well, but I live at the coast and this morning it was 57 degrees with a marine layer rolling in with fog, which means that it's hot in the valley. And the ocean is our giant air conditioner, which is pulls in the cool air, hits the coast range, and cools us down. So you can imagine that living at a place where on a July day it's 57 degrees to start, I'm more inclined to weave a fabric that has a certain warmth to it. I think it's a three season kind of fabric, particularly in the Northwest. Um, but I love this piece called Fog on the River. It's a story of the gray fog rolling in and obscuring the landscape along the river. So the green trees get pastel and the border on this coat shows the trees, tree colors and the silver of the river. And if you were following yesterday, you'll know that the edge, which is a bound edge, suggests water or at the water's edge, which is one of my stories I tell from the Oregon coast. Again, another stunning photo by Tearsheet PDX. This uh, waterfall scarf appeared on the cover of their October issue, which was really exciting for, that to, for me to see that happen. I'm giving you a tour of the other wall in the booth. Here you see the waterfall scarf in the brighter colors. And here is a quilted coat. Again, the stitching is subtle. The light reflects it as it is as the body moves. And now I'm going to bring you to one of my favorite pieces that I made, which is the hooded shawl. This was originally designed in response to a client request. She needed a meditation piece, which was to be worn with a cape. And so working with her, I designed a hooded shawl. The hooded shawl 
is very versatile because it can be worn as three different pieces. With the hood down, it covers the back and you're given warmth. The two tail pieces wrap around in the front and they balance on your shoulders so you don't have to worry about it slipping off. The texture of the fabric also helps with that. Is that the, it has a natural uh, ability to stay put. It can be worn with the hood up, with the hood down as a shawl, and when it's complete, and you can tie it in the front or have it hang loose so it looks like a vest. Then if you pair it with one of my ruffled edge collars, you have almost a complete outfit that will transform your basic clothing. You can look dressy pretty quickly. The hooded shawl works really well for many seasons. I found that there were some restaurants that were so icy cold I needed to wrap and this was the perfect solution. Other times in the fall or the winter when it's bitterly cold you need the extra layer. You can pull the hood up and wrap up and be quite warm. It's great if you travel in an airplane. You can pull the hood up and have your private space to take a nap or you can roll it up and make a pillow. And of course this will roll up and fit in a purse very nicely. Again, perfect travel piece. Now I'm going to move around to the front and you're going to see another image from Tearsheet PDX magazine. This beautiful picture wearing the poet's coat with a hooded shawl. And here I have a cape with a ruffled edge collar. Some pieces are simple, but it's the colors and the details as you get close up that make the story rich. I also want you to know that most of the work I do is custom. And it all starts, I just got away from me here, I'm going to move it over to this other table. It all starts with a measuring tape with your measurements. I begin to design a pattern so a piece will fit you. This takes more time, more skill, but the, the time that I put into making this, weaving the cloth, designing the patterns, doing the quilting, it makes these forever pieces. They're quality pieces that will always work in your wardrobe when you reach for them. So thank you for joining me today. I'm going to give you a little final tour from side to side of the booth. The sun's starting to come out. I think we will finally get some a warm day today. The fog will burn off. And just for fun, I'm going to step next door. And you're going to see what I did with my old art fair booth. Earlier this spring, I decided to get out this booth and turn it into a garden space. And this morning I noticed there was a beautiful purple flower. This is a small 10 by 10 art fair booth as a garden space because I needed to keep the deer away. Can you see the purple clematis? That was our surprise this morning in the garden. I have a monster wall of peas and it looks like they need to be harvested. Thank you for joining me today. We'll have another segment when I talk about weaving the cloth and making the patterns. Goodbye for now. Check out the Salem Art Fair as a virtual fair and visit my website, theoregonweaver.com. Send me an email, sit, call me on the phone. We're going to make this work. Let's stay in touch. Bye.